Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Lee Brad Lloyd and my channel is all about smart home tech with Apple HomeKit. If this is something that you're into, then please consider subscribing so you can catch my future videos. This is an exciting time as I recently hit the 1000 subscriber mark after four months in starting my channel. I love making these videos and sharing my experience and opinions with all of you. I remember starting my smart home and feeling a little lost or overwhelmed about where to start. If my channel can help anyone find their way or make this process a little bit easier, then I'm happy and it makes it worth it. Thank you for helping my channel grow with every like, view, share, and comment. Okay, so now to the exciting stuff for you. As a huge thank you to all of you and to celebrate 1,000 subscribers, I partnered with Eve on an exciting giveaway with some awesome Eve smart home products for HomeKit. Stick around till the end of this video or skip around in the chapters if you really can't wait. I'll let you know what products I'm giving away and how you can win. Speaking of Eve, today I'm reviewing a product that I know you will love, the Eve Room. This is actually the Eve Room 2 and it came out in 2018. It's been around for a while, but air quality is relevant now more than ever, since so many of us are spending so much time at home in 2021, and many have even made the move to permanently working from home. Thank you to Eve for sending me this product for my unfiltered review and opinion. This video is not sponsored by Eve, and like always, I'll give it to you straight. All right, let's jump in. The Eve Room is an indoor air monitor that has a temperature, humidity, and air quality sensor. If you're familiar with the Eve Weather or the Eve Button, then you'll notice the Eve Room is similar in design, with aluminum sides and an e-ink display. Unlike the Button and the Weather, the Eve Room has a rechargeable lithium battery that charges using the included micro USB cord and lasts around six weeks on a single charge. I would like to see USB-C in the future as micro USB seems to be on its way out. When the battery's low, the unit will show you that it needs to be charged and it'll go into power saving mode, where only the temperature and humidity sensor will work until it's charged. The Eve Room connects via Bluetooth Low Energy. Eve, as you may know, has been putting out a lot of thread-enabled devices this year, including the Eve Aqua, Eve Weather, Eve Door and Window Sensor, and most recently, the Eve Energy. This means that if you have a thread border router, you get the benefits of faster response time, all without using much energy or congestion to your Wi-Fi network. A border router can be either a HomePod mini or one of the new Apple TV 4K second generation models. This was just released and I just did a video on this last weekend, so I'll leave a link in the comments if you want to learn more. I wouldn't be surprised to see a thread enabled version released in the future to complement all of the other devices in Eve's thread lineup. But I also think that of all the devices, the Eve Room is one where I'm okay with the Bluetooth connection because I'm not constantly fetching data. It's not like a door and window sensor, where for example, I want to make sure a light turns on the instant a door is opened. Your Eve Room, as well as other Eve Bluetooth accessories, communicate using your home hub. So this is any Apple TV, HD or higher, or HomePods, including the original OG. Your device will connect automatically to the closest hub. So if you're like me and you have HomePods and Apple TVs all throughout your house, then you won't have any issues. If that isn't the case for you, you can purchase an Eve Extend, which connects using Wi-Fi and then connects directly to your Eve products over Bluetooth to give you a boost in range. It seems like there are many temperature and humidity sensors these days, including recent reports that the HomePod mini includes a built-in temperature and humidity sensor that could possibly be exposed to HomeKit with a future update. But the big difference with the Eve Room is that in addition to temperature and humidity, you can also see air quality, and all of this information is available directly from the screen. Let's talk a little bit more about air quality because for me, this is the most interesting. Eve measures the air quality by the number of VOCs in the air. You might be wondering what are VOCs? VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. I personally thought VOCs were chemical in paint and I paid extra for low VOC paint, which is marketed as having less chemicals and being healthier, as well as reducing that nauseating smell that you sometimes get after painting. I wasn't wrong, but what I didn't realize is that VOCs are in everything, not just paint. This includes furniture, appliances, mattresses, toys, cleaning products, and even skincare products. This is just to name a few. You may have heard of off-gassing, which is when products release particulate matter and gases that were formerly trapped in a liquid or solid known as carcinogens. You know that nasty smell you notice after buying and unpacking certain products? Yeah, VOCs. 
Common examples of VOCs that may be present in our everyday lives include benzene, paint, ethylene glycol, polyester, toluene glue, formaldehyde carpets, and tetrachloroethylene and dry cleaning fluid. Wow, I had to practice that a few times, but it still doesn't compare to when I had to say Rombai Cozy Dodecahedron. Who knows what video that's in reference to? If you think you know, leave me a comment. Here's what I found from the EPA's website. Volatile organic compounds, VOCs, are emitted as gases from certain solids or liquids. VOCs include a variety of chemicals, some of which may have short and long-term adverse health effects, such as headaches, nausea, liver and kidney damage, and can irritate the lungs, and it's suspected to be a cause of some cancers. I'm not a doctor, but it sounds like effects that I'd prefer to stay away from. To live our best smart home life, my wife and I like to keep a clean house and use a lot of DIY cleaning products or more natural, environmentally friendly products, but sometimes they can be hard to find. I noticed that after cleaning the bathrooms, the air quality goes down. So now we make an effort to run the fan and open a window when cleaning, especially when using less than natural products. We get a lot of our DIY cleaning product ideas from Melissa Maker over on Clean My Space. Melissa is also a Canadian from Toronto, Ontario, and she runs her own cleaning business and started a YouTube channel over a decade ago. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to her channel in the description. I've been following her channel for years and she's always been very mindful of using more natural products whenever possible. I have to be honest, I never thought I'd have my own YouTube channel to actually be able to plug clean my space. So there you go. I also noticed that my air quality seemed to improve after changing my furnace filter. I try to change it every month as recommended, but every once in a while I lose track. Changing your furnace filter often can also help reduce dust and allow your furnace to run more efficiently. So yeah, VOCs are bad, but because they're everywhere, they can only be minimized, not eliminated. The first step is to monitor your air quality because knowing's half the battle, right? What if your air quality is poor? What can you do about it? Eve recommends the following actions. Open a window to let fresh air inside. Evict polluters. Contaminants are often associated with new products, so storing them properly and sticking to more natural materials instead of plastics may help. It may also help to let these products off gas outdoors for a period of time, which will also help with that unpleasant smell that you will sometimes notice with a new product. Use an air purifier. I don't have an air purifier currently, though I'd like to add one. Especially after researching the impacts of VOCs, it seems like a good investment. Josh over at the Tech Up just recently put out a video where he set up an automation with his IKEA air purifier based on the Eve Room air quality level. I'll make sure to include a link so you can check that out. Just make sure that if you want to filter out those VOCs that you choose the IKEA for Nuftig filter and gas cleaning. It's a very cost effective filter and product when compared to other options on the market. I'm using my Eve Room in our master bathroom. There are many rooms where I think this would make sense, and I can see myself adding more in the future, particularly into our bedrooms. Our master bathroom has a lot of humidity, especially when we use the shower, so I want to be able to monitor this, and I like that I can see the information right from the screen. As mentioned earlier, I don't have an air purifier in here, but I do have an exhaust fan that's connected to my Lutron Caseta switch. If the humidity levels get too high, then I can automatically turn the fan on. It also helps to just open a window and turn up the HRV to bring in more outdoor air. If you choose an air purifier, it does matter what kind you choose, so choose wisely. Even a basic filter can improve the air quality, though particles come in various shapes, sizes, and states of matter. All are not created equal. Be aware of the kind of filter that you choose and be mindful to change and clean your filter for your furnace, HVAC, and air purifier units often. Chris Young from the Home Kit Geek has some really great air quality content, so I'll make sure to leave a link to his channel in the description. Lots of stuff to check out there, including a review he did on the Vocalink air purifier. I've researched this a little and I can only locate the product in the US and Europe. This retails for $399 US, so it is a significant investment. It does remove VOCs among other particles such as pollen, bacteria, dust, and smoke that improve your air quality. Let's move on though and take a closer look at the Eve Room in the Eve app, then I'll show you how to create a simple automation. Stay with me to the end. I wonder if you may have a chance to win an Eve Room. Hmm. Here in the Eve app, I can go into the room where I have my Eve Room and then I can click on it to see more information. 
Here I can see the current air quality, temperature, and humidity. I can drill down further to see even more information by pressing the arrow. When you do that, you'll see a graph of the last 18 hours or so. But press the I and you can see even more detail, including the hour, day, week, or month. This can be really helpful if your air quality is low so you can really pinpoint when the quality started to go down and think back to what may have caused the change. You also have the option to compare data or export it to a CSV if you want even more information. You can also set up an automation to set your lights to turn red or whatever color you want to alert you that the air quality is low. This way you can take action and open a window. I got this tip directly from the Eve blog and I'll link it in the description. To start, you'll need a light, like the Eve light strip or other smart light, and of course the Eve room. You want to make sure that wherever you have the light, it's somewhere visible where you spend most of your time. Of course, you can do this with multiple lights as well if you have them installed in your smart home. To start, we'll need to create a rule. We can do this right from the Eve room where we just were. Click Automation, then Add Rule, then click Add Trigger. Our trigger is going to be the air quality and we want worse or equal to two stars. In this case, we're not going to add any conditions, so we can just hit Next. Now we need to select the scene that we want to run. If you scroll right to the bottom, then you can click Add Scene. Here, we can click Add Actions and then select the accessories that we want to control. Here, I'm going to control my floor lamp, so I want it to power on and I want the color to turn red. Now we can click Next. First, I'm going to name my scene. Then click Next and name the rule. And that's it, now you're done. You can also create a rule to turn this light off once the air quality improves. So we're going to add a new rule. And then we're going to do air quality is better or equal to three stars. And this time we're going to add a value condition. And that value is going to be when the floor lamp one is on and turned red. Then we're going to click next and here we're going to create our scene and then select the floor lamp one to turn it off. Then name the scene. Name the rule and then you're done. So when the air quality falls below three stars, my floor lamp one is gonna turn red to alert me. And then when the air quality improves to three or more stars, the light will turn off. I also have an automation that turns my bathroom exhaust fan on for one hour if the air quality falls to one star. To set this up, I created a rule that's triggered when the air quality reaches one star or worse and sets a scene that turns on both my exhaust fan as well as an out of sight smart plug that I'm using as a proxy. I then have the smart plug program to turn off after one hour. Any smart plug will work as long as you can program an auto off like I did on this Wemo plug. I then have an automation that will turn the exhaust fan off after one hour or when the air quality improves to three stars, but only if the proxy plug that I'm using is turned on. This way it won't interfere or override any other automations that I may have set up or if I had turned it on manually. Thanks to everyone for sticking with me so far. I know this has been a lot of information. I myself have learned a lot since getting my Eve room. So the question is, should you get this product? You may even be thinking, should I wait until it's thread enabled to pick one up? My overall opinion is that the Eve room seems expensive at $139 Canadian. There isn't a lot of competition out there in terms of home kit indoor air quality monitors. Though there are a couple other Katera products, one is the Laser Egg that retails for $189 and it measures PM2.5 which is fine dust, VOCs, temperature, and humidity. And there's also the Laser Egg 2 plus CO2 which retails for $249.99. These products have batteries that only last 8 hours or can be plugged in. The additional sensors on the Katera are nice, but consider the extra cost, that it basically needs to stay plugged in, and it's much larger may not fit as nicely into your home decor. 
I like that the Eve room is constantly monitoring my air quality. I've seen a range of one to five stars over the past few months since I've been testing this out, and I've noticed that the air quality improves when I increase airflow, open a window, and take steps to use more natural products and reduce the VOCs that I even bring into the environment. Also, like I mentioned, I'm now in the market for an air purifier. With schools still closed where I live and working from home over the last 14 months, it makes sense to pay attention to the air we're breathing. In terms of mounting, the Eve Room doesn't have a notch like the Eve Weather. I wish that I could hang it up or mount the Eve Room on the wall. I'm sure this has to do with having the air sensors in the back of the unit, but it would be nice if I had that option. I've recently seen some 3D printed stands. Let me know if you've seen any good solutions in the comments. I also wish the price would come down so it was more affordable because I think it makes sense to have more than one in a few different rooms, like bedrooms or one on each floor. If you're thinking of adding several of these throughout your home, then the cost can really add up. My advice would be to start small, put one where you want it the most, and then add more over time if you wish. In terms of waiting for thread, thread is nice and I do hope it comes to the Eve room, but as I've mentioned, as long as you have a home hub nearby, then the Bluetooth is gonna be just fine. I have an Apple TV and a HomePod right in my bedroom, so it's quite close and I haven't had any issues. Okay everyone, it's time to share the details of my 1000 subscriber giveaway. Thank you so much for your support, this is a huge milestone for a new channel. I'm blown away, I'd love to think that this means that viewers like you are finding value in my content, and I'm having so much fun sharing my experiences and my passions for HomeKit with you. I'd also like to send a shout out to the other creators in the smart home space. Check out the channels tab where I feature other HomeKit and smart home creators. Head on over, check it out, and follow them as well so we can continue to build the best smart home community. It's hard work and I have so much respect for those that have been doing this for many months and even years. It's an exciting time for HomeKit with Thread and Matter coming up. I'm also a big fan of Eve and have been long before I started making these videos. They make great products, have an amazing app, and I love that they focus solely on HomeKit. Maybe with Matter, all of you out there using Lady A and Google can finally try out an Eve product with your ecosystem of choice. And likewise, you could just jump on over to HomeKit. I've featured and tested out many Eve products in my previous videos, and I'm so thankful for their support, generosity, and partnership for this giveaway of 1,000 subscribers. Here's how it's gonna work. It's pretty simple to win. I'm so excited to have three prizes to give away today. An Eve room, so that you can enjoy the benefits of monitoring your indoors as I've discussed today. An Eve weather, released earlier this year with thread to monitor your outdoors. An Eve light strip, which is super bright and produces stunning colors. Here's how to enter. Like this YouTube video, follow at Meet Eve and at the Brad Lloyd on Instagram, and leave me a comment on this YouTube video with the hashtag the Brad Lloyd 1K giveaway. All of the details will also be in the comments. Three winners will be drawn randomly next weekend. If you're one of the lucky winners, then I'll let you know by responding to your comment on YouTube and we'll announce on Twitter and Insta. Please make sure to email me your mailing address within 72 hours to tbl at thebradloyd.com. If I don't hear back from you, then I'll need to move on to another winner. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.